Hey everybody, today we're going to do a couple of non-parametric tests for the median in R. We're going to start with the Wilcoxon signed rank test, and then we'll move on to the sign test. We can do both of these with commands in the base package. We're going to continue to look at the example that we used in the previous videos. We have a data set of size 10. It consists of a single value, so here I've just encoded it as a vector. We're interested in a null hypothesis that the median is equal to 5.5 for the population and, that, and an alternative hypothesis that the median is actually greater than 5.5. So in R, to do the Wilcoxon signed rank test, we use the command wilcox.test. We feed it the vector that we're interested in testing. Then we give it the null hypothesis and we tell it what sort of alternative we have. In this case, greater. And we see a p-value of 0.1162. A couple of things to be aware of here when we're encoding the median in R, we're using the notation mu equals, so that's a little bit off. I think mu usually refers to a mean. We live with that. R will default to a median of 5.5 for the null, I'm sorry, R will default to a median of 0 for the null hypothesis it will default to a two-sided alternative hypothesis. So if one or both of those defaults works for us, we can leave out those arguments. There are many additional arguments that we could use here to be that you can explore. Two that are relevant to our discussion are exact and correct. So we saw that when we did when we're doing Wil the Wilcoxon sign rank test by hand, we'll use a normal approximation when we're looking at the test statistic w. R will not do that. R will go exact by default. So if we want to use that normal approximation, we have to say exact equals false. The p-value is slightly different, 0 0.1106. That's more like the p-value that we saw when we did this by hand in the previous video. When we did the normal approximation in the previous video, we used a continuity correction. We could leave that out if we want. And that drops the p-value even a little bit more. There's not really any good reason to not do the continuity correction, and there's, for us, no good reason to do not to do the exact computation. R has the computing power to do this. We may as well take advantage of it. Next, let's do the sign test. The command that we're going to use is binome.test. Again, it's in the base packages. So one thing to be aware of here is that the binome.test function is not just going to accept a vector of values. It's going to want a number of successes and a total number of trials. A success here is going to be considered to be a value in the vector that is where the null hypothesis is true. In other words, a value in that vector that's greater than 5.5. So we can get that number just by counting by hand. Here we can look at the original vector and see that there are seven values that are greater than 5.5. So we do binome.test, seven successes in 10 trials. And again, we need to feed it. The alternative is greater. And we get a p-value of 0.1719, exactly what we got in our video on the sign test. Counting values by hand is fine when you have a vector of length 10, not so much if you have a longer vector. This easily could have been a much greater, a much larger data set. We need a shortcut for this. The way we're going to do it is with sum x greater than 5.5. We get 7. What R is doing here is it is taking the vector x and going through it step by step and asking, is each value greater than 5.5? If so, it's going to say that this inequality, x greater than 5.5, is true. If not, it's false. So x greater than 5.5 is going to be a logical vector of length 10. Sum is going to treat the trues as 1s, the false as a 0, and add all those up. And so that's how we get sum x greater than 5.5 equals to 7. 